I recently attended my first comic show in over two years. Met a lot of cool people, picked up some great books. Stay tuned to hear about my experience. Hey there, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. I'm Alan, and in today's sesh, I'll be going over a couple of cool things that I either picked up, cool people that I've met recently at the Berkeley Comic Show. About a couple weeks back, the Berkeley Comic Show had its event. They normally have this every, I think, four to six months, but over the last two years, no shows. This is one of their, their first shows. This is a much smaller show than like, you know, the big comic cons or the big conventions. And this one was very collector slash vendor focused, right? So there are about 15 to 20 different vendors there selling long boxes of raw books, lots of slabs, just basically anything a collector would want. There was also um, one published artist there. His name was Dan Brereton. Unfortunately, I did not have anything of his that I could have him sign, but it was still cool to have an, an artist there. There were two other artists that I went there specifically to go visit. And those two are part of the Gibbon gang. So I met these guys through the Reggie Collects channel, one of them being Mark, AKA Frog Boy. I'll put his information up here. He does a lot of art recreations and you know, I ordered a piece from him, but I will save that for another video. Secondly, I met Matt Stivaletti. So check him out as well. And this piece right here, I had commissioned from him and I was able to pick it up at that, at that show. So just to be there, talk to them, hang out with them for a bit, talk about art, talk about collecting, just everything in general. It felt very familiar to hanging out with, with friends in the comic shop. Throughout this whole thing, you saw a lot of people there, of course masked up. Um, we were all like kind of hunting for books, both on tables, on floors, ton of long boxes, a collector's dream in terms of, of kind of collecting. Of course, behind the vendor, you would see a lot of the wall books. So when we say wall books, those are kind of the more expensive or more key books that you wouldn't necessarily have in the boxes in front of you. So saw a lot of that. There's a little bit of sticker shock for some of the things, but you know, I was able to find some really cool books in the bins themselves. So I came here with a plan, came there with my backpack, came in there with my Reggie Collects um, store folio or comics to go box as Reggie would call it. Just so, you know, from previous experience, I knew that if I picked up some books, I want to put it in there. I actually also brought a couple of top loaders just in case I picked up a book that, you know, I wanted to keep extra secure. One thing I actually heard from, you know, No Good Comics and his experience at, um, at this other comic show is, you know, sometimes Ven like sometimes people will also bring slabs to the show to do, you know, maybe some trades. I didn't do that this time, but maybe next time I would definitely do that. Walking around, it was very interesting talking to a lot of the vendors. Everyone was super happy, polite, you know, very friendly. I talked to some of the vendors and asked them, oh, do they have a brick and mortar store? It's funny, a lot of them actually don't. So they, they bring these collections from different comic show to different comic show to sell, but they don't necessarily have a brick and mortar store that you could actually go visit. Some of them have online stores, but you have a, a huge range of different type of vendors. One really cool vendor, and you know, I, I talked to them actually in 2019 at the Berkeley Comic Show, Shortbox. So ever since 2019, Shortbox released their new app where it's essentially a online marketplace for people to buy and sell books. It was funny when I saw that huge wall that Shortbox had, I was telling Gene and Ian, I could just sit here and just stare at these books all day long. They had a lot of cool books and it was just, their display was really well done, I have to say. We were saying that we could just like put a beanbag down zen out and just totally just enjoy relax and look at these books that was such a cool feeling to mutually have with other comic book collectors they were both really cool guys and just talk to them i talked to them for probably like 15 20 minutes about just where they see the market going what kind of things they like to collect what they're looking for the trends that they're seeing in the comic market in general that was a really fun conversation to have i definitely want to talk to those guys again is funny there's a lot of people that i actually know on instagram that 
since everyone was masked up, I didn't really recognize too many people. But I found out afterwards, after posting pictures on Instagram, they told me they were there. So next time, I will definitely post on Instagram that I will be going to a show so I could possibly meet up with more people. One person I did recognize was Theo from Rage Theo. I totally recognized him because from his Instagram, I noticed his very distinct mask, which is a V for Vendetta mask. And that was really cool. It was so funny. So I, I made eye contact with him and I was like, like as if I knew him, but I'm sure he didn't know who I was. But he acted like, you know, oh, I know this guy. I walked up to him. I introduced myself. Of course, it's kind of weird because if you introduce just your name, he might not know that name unless you also tell him your handle on, on Instagram. Once I did, we just talked for, for a good 10 minutes about comics and mutants and everything in general about, about comic collecting. It was actually pretty cool. It felt like we were both walk into a comic shop and just chatting. So it was a really cool feeling to really connect with people at a show when I mainly only connected with people on Instagram or online through YouTube and whatnot. Since this event was mainly about the books and the people, after going through the people part, I'd like to show you a couple of the books that I picked up here. Outside of this awesome commission that I had from Matt Stivaletti, I picked up a, a nice stack of books here. So knowing my 2021 goals and trying to stay completely focused on this being my year of X, I stuck with that. So I'll show a couple books that are off of my 2020 goal list and then a couple that are on. During the show, I actually pulled out my Google Sheets from my phone to make sure I stay focused on the list that I was going for, hunting for specific books. So these first three are not on that list, but I thought they were pretty cool books. First up is Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine Number 1. This is an interesting book. I think it has Wolverine, Silver Surfer, Shang-Chi, and Man-Thing. It's a pretty weird but cool combo. Next, once I saw this, I had to pick this up. This is X-Men Number 290, classic Wills Potasio cover. And one of my favorite Jim Lee covers, X-Men Number 11. Always, always such a cool cover. Very iconic for me. So those were my three non-goal books. So next we'll go into my goal books. As a reminder, some of my goals this year have been the early Claremont run, right? So pre-Dark Phoenix Saga. So first we have X-Men number 128. Very cool Proteus kind of warping reality cover. We have X-Men number 126, first appearance of Proteus. I love the, the X-Men jumping out of the panel or jumping out of the cover. X-Men number 124. Now we have X-Men number 113, very cool cover with everyone fighting Magneto. X-Men number 112, classic George Perez cover. Oh man, Magneto versus Wolverine and Colossus. Not a good matchup for those guys. Next we have X-Men 105 first Lalandra. Very cool. And the one that I was going for these past couple weeks and I finally found a copy there is X-Men 108. So X-Men 108 is the first time that John Byrne started doing art in the X-Men. So I really like this, not necessarily because of John Byrne, but reading the whole story line between 94 and 130, this was one of the storylines that I liked the most, mainly because you saw the true power of the Phoenix in this one, where she was basically holding all of reality together. And at the end, she's just like, oh, I'm just a little bit sleepy. This was a very cool book for me, and I was so glad to find it. This was an extremely fun show for me because the main focus was the books, the main focus was the people. It's a very small, intimate type of show, not the huge cons that have like cosplay contests, different events, lots of different panels, lots of different everything, essentially. But this one was a, a, a very good show to kind of get into if you want to do a lot of hunting. And hopefully next time I meet a couple more of the comic book community. So if you guys are planning on going to any shows, 
what kind of shows do you like? Do you like these small, intimate, very vendor, comic-focused shows? Or do you like the bigger ones where there's more events, different contests and panels and whatnot? Please put that in the comment section below. It was a great time and met some great cool people, picked up some awesome books. If you like this video, please don't forget to click that thumbs up button, subscribe, and click that bell icon so you're notified of when I come out with new content. From my comic journey to yours, make it your own. Thanks all. Bye.